Hi, my dear friends. We're back from Sparkles College with a very refined, a very important lecture for you. This is basically the crux of the entire course of Pakistan Sri Lanka that we were doing previously. Pakistan Sri Lanka lessons learned. So, if you remember, in the start, in the very beginning, we started with the our uh, downfall or uh, downfall of uh, you know Pakistan, going on the same track and same same pace as Sri Lanka. Then we discussed that why Pakistan cannot, uh, you know, just collapse like Sri Lanka did because of some of the resources and some of the capabilities that Pakistan has. Our third lecture, that was the recent lecture that I gave, was about the relationships, a relationship of Pakistan and Sri Lanka, which turned out or which can be turned out in in a more way, more accurate way, a game changer and South Asia. Now our lecture for today is Pakistan and Sri Lanka lessons learned. By understanding all these domains and all all the dynamic dynamics basically that we have studied, we have studied various angles. We have studied different dimensions of this course. So what are the lessons that Pakistan and Sri Lanka should learn from you know these things, and what should they do in future? So the last lecture for this one, like the lecture that I'm giving you today. It's the course one that show you, that basically shows you that what Pakistan and Sri Lanka has learned by being staying with each other and understanding each other. So it's very important. First of all, Pakistan Sri Lanka's economic crisis. Just a background of what we discussed. Sri Lanka's economic crisis started in 2019, led to extraordinary levels of inflation, near depletion of foreign exchange reserves. We all know that you know the the crisis basically began in 2019. There was a lot of chaos that was coming ahead, and people didn't know what to do because you know there was the extraordinary levels of inflation. Then you can see these people protesting with the flag, with these things written that enough is enough, we're done. Can you see how much you know the prices are rising, and the foreign exchange reserves were depleting, and you know there were shortages of medical supplies and increase in basic price commodities. So the basic necessities of life, such as food, water, shelter, these were of they were so expensive that they, these people didn't know what to do. They were av- they're not aware of how to you know fulfill their basic needs, how to have the medical supplies because when you are having inflations and you know stuff like that and you're having a bad bad condition basically poverty is around you there are chances of uh, more chances of getting sick so there are medical supplies that are needed for people and there were immense shortages for medical supplies as well pakistan's rupee was in is one of the world's worst performing currencies right even right now we know there is there is worse uh, you know performance currency that pakistan is and all these problems are not just of sri lanka but also pakistan so this is this topic is very important if you see it's pakistan sri lankan economic crisis it's not just pakistan's economic crisis or it's not just sri lanka's economic crisis they are total totally telling that what are the economic crisis that sri lanka is facing and pakistan is facing so economic crisis for both levels of inflation high exporting ex- exchanges are depleting shortages of medical supplies increase in prices of basic commodities pakistan's rupee was one is one of the world's worst performing currencies we all agree to that foreign exchange reserves are absolutely low dangerously it's low we have no reserves left we don't know what we're going to do after a few uh, years maybe or even a few months because we don't have any reserves what are we going to do in case of there are you know some fatal incidents the incidents which are going to occur so we don't know absolutely we don't know what we have to do the external relief of pakistan has increased many folds many folds means that many folds right so many folds are that you need to understand that there's so much debt on pakistan that pakistan has no developmental pr- plans and it has no developmental programs that it it can look forward to or it can make sure that you know it's going to make sure that okay a we're going to sort everything out because what happens is that you do take debt you do to take loans investments and everything because you know that you're investing them in the country and ultimately they're resulting in the development and when they're going to give you the finances you can repay the return the debts and return the investments but like provide sorry benefits on the investments but the thing is that the external debt of pakistan has increased many fold while the development is decreased right so the crucial is worse now people don't know what to do people don't understand how they're going to survive in these situations you have seen how in pakistan the current scenario is such that the pakistan the petrol prices are on the top there are so many problems that are going on 
so it needs to be very accurately understood that uh, you know their external debt of pakistan has increased manifold currency is trading at its lowest rate so if you're buying something from other company countries you're getting it very expensive why because your currency is the worst performing currencies in the world so you don't know what to do it's one of the world's worst performing currencies so you for example let me give you an example from pakistan to a us exchange rate i already discussed this with you previously as well what's the what's basically the difference right so for instance i can say that today's rate let me just check check the exact rate for you and i'll tell you one second so today it's one second guys yeah so today is 219 219 times or 219 percent which means double triple you know in those manifolds pakistan is poorer than us us is richer 219 times more richer 219 percent more richer than pakistan so currency is trading at its lowest rate if you they have to purchase anything from us it's going to be super expensive for them because they don't know what to do the currency is performing in a worst possible way right so this was one very important very crucial topic why i gave you a good background of pakistan sri lankan's economic crisis so that you can see what the economic crisis are we have done this before we are doing it today again just to understand that why is it different just to understand the overview that in case you forgot you are well aware of what we are facing what sri lanka is facing what pakistan is facing what are the economic crises that they have right so if you're going to understand these concepts it's very safe to say that you're going to understand that what are the lessons that pakistan and sri lanka has learned now moving on to some of the lessons i gave you the background all right it is wise unwise to ignore the lessons to be learned from sri lanka so let's see uh, like can you see a dollar has been us dollar has also been made over her and just to show the difference but i'm just telling you one thing that it is unwise to ignore the lessons to be learned from sri lanka if pakistan will not take any lessons from sri lanka they are going to do their loss they need to make sure that they are well aware of you know some of the um, easy things or some of the benefits that they they can earn from sri lanka and how the cordial relationships can be helpful for them so that's how we're going to start this with the first point avoid defying economic realities one needs to understand the economic conditions before things get worse so you need to understand pakistan needs to understand sri lanka's economic conditions sri lanka needs to understand pakistan's economic conditions no the most important thing is that they understand each of those economic conditions first because if they're going to understand the economic conditions before things get worse they'll be able to avoid the defying economic realities they will be able to take each other's support they will know that okay we have an ally who's going to support us who's going to be there with us right so this is again a very important thing that avoid maintaining a fixed exchange rate so it is difficult to maintain as it may require high interest rates and deflating the deflating the economy so pakistan and sri lanka both should avoid maintaining a fixed exchange rate because the fixed exchange rate means what right it means that this inflate rate in interest rate is super high when interest rate is super high so in banks and in pakistan you know domestically or for in foreign countries you're going to get loans at very high prices the interest rate would be so much that it's going to worsen the condition because when you have to return you have to return so much more right so it's like a debt trap that's the reason that you know avoid maintaining a fixed exchange rate do not refuse to take imf support no other country will get agree to give you loan now this is the best point that i can see over here people they don't understand right they think that okay international monetary fund they are giving you loans why take loans from them pakistan there are some economists who have this uh thinking in pakistan as well that you know don't go to imf i understand one should try to get sorted try to have development so that they don't have to be beggars in front of imf but as helpers just see them at such conditions it's very essential for imf now recently imf has approved the loan to pakistan and that's the reason that once they have approved the loan now other countries were going to come into the motion as well and they're going to approve the loans as well for pakistan so that's the whole point of this that if you're not going to refuse to take imf support in your you know ego so there no other country will agree to give you loan because they would say that if imf support was not taken and if imf is not of help to pakistan how would we be 
we shouldn't be help of folks and let them do what they want to do so this is something which is extremely important just to sum it up once again for you we were doing pakistan sri lanka's lessons learned again it is unwise to ignore the lessons to be learned from sri lanka three points we have covered avoid defining defying economic realities avoid maintaining a fixed exchange rate do not refuse to take imf support <clears throat> all right moving ahead some problem with my yeah so we are, i just discussed with you that we have covered these points so forth so we're going to you know just confirm i just want to make sure that all of you understood these points again if you have any sort of questions just feel free to write me a note uh you know in the comment section i'll be more than happy to uh you know uh help you out and once again i want to request you that if i'm missing any specific word that you're not getting right now please go and google it okay just google it you're going to get all the definitions because before understanding or revising these slides it's very important to get clear clarified with all of the uh what do we call it the the terms and definitions and everything i'm trying to cover it on my part the maximum that i could but still if i'm leaving something unintentionally just go to google search it up and still if you don't understand it just drop me a comment and i'll make sure to help you out with it all right So Pakistan Sri Lanka's lessons learned. It is unwise to ignore the lessons to be learned from Sri Lanka. In every page, it is written, just so that no one could just you know miss the opportunity of getting the lessons from Sri Lanka. You know, getting lessons is also a blessing because you learn a lot, right? Try not to choose capital controls over loans. Capital controls lead to evasion and corruption on a large scale. So companies that want to take their money out of the country do so by any means, right? So they just send it to uh, the other countries as well through illegal means. So there, there shouldn't be any capital control because it leads to corruption. All right. So try not to choose capital controls over the loans. Now, many of you, without before going ahead, I am going to cover something very um, interesting with you, and maybe some of you are having this question in your mind as well. that you know what does a capital control mean so capital control uh you know i'd like to tell you that it basically means capital controls are residency based measures such as transaction taxes other limits or outright prohibition prohibitions that a nation's government can use to regulate flows from capital markets into and out of the country's capital account these measures may be economy wide sector specific or industry specific but you don't have to put those controls over loans at this situation it's a lesson that you know we need the help we need the support to invest in our country yes if if we're not going to allow it it's going to lead to corruption all right so we do need help that's a fact then we you know we can't deny this fact that we need support from other countries and other people to give out loans to us because if you're not going to feel be in our egos there will be no absolutely no point right so we need to make sure that we are doing this all right then we have it will increase the demand for us dollars again uh you know it's very important that the us dollars demand is going to be increased this is a very important point that needs to be taken into account that if you're going to put uh you know bans or if you're going to choose capital controls over loans it will increase the demand for us dollars and it, when the demand is increased for us dollars what will happen the exports the exports will be more than the imports economics of supply and demand dictate they tell you how much one country needs and how much the other country needs so so, so it's very important that the demand this point, point should be taken into account that this all scenario it's going to increase the demand for us dollars which means exports more than its imports and economics of supply and demand will come forth forward All right. Before moving to the slide, I just want to quickly recap. So these were three, five problems that we discussed. <coughs> Sorry, five lessons. Avoid defining economic realities. Avoid maintaining a fixed exchange rate. Do not refuse to take IMF support. Try not to choose capital controls over loans. It will increase demand for US dollars. Now, guys, there are many other reasons that we're going to just do. But if again, I am mentioning it again and again. If any questions, please write the comments down. um you know in the comment section and i'll make sure to reply to each one and uh, each and every one of you because i understand that these concepts are not just as easy as the other lessons this is a crucial topic and history and all these political subjects they need a great amount of attention so feel free to write the comments okay